Hallelujah. We want to give God the praise. We want to give Him the adoration for this day and for this opportunity to be found at His feet. Oh, Jesus, people, everything is going to be great. It's going to be great this evening. It is going to be great. Listen to this scripture and then we will sit down. Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 Matthew 24 14 and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Jesus was talking about the end time, the complexities, the dangers, the difficulties. But he was telling the disciples that this gospel must be kept. In its simple, powerful form. Don't let us be afraid of tomorrow. The power that saves and transforms is this gospel. Nothing else, nothing more. Don't let us be afraid of the complexities of tomorrow. Because the children who are coming after us are also complex. Every generation who have his own people who can meet the challenges of their generation. But when they come, they shouldn't go looking for other matters. The gospel. It is this gospel. Nothing else. Nothing more. Spirit of the living God. Oh, let us not wander away from this gospel. Let us keep the gospel simple. Let us keep the gospel powerful. It is the power of God that will save the world. Amen. Please have your seats. I will in this talk Try to open up the gospel. Establish why it is exclusive. This gospel is exclusive. I will dwell extensively on why the redemption story has to be told. And offer four ways this gospel of the kingdom should be handled. But let me begin with the cost of God's love. These days we see that everyone and everybody and every society is appealing to the love of God. But listen, the love of God is expensive. The fact that God is love does not mean that he tolerates sin and evil. No. The forgiveness of my sins and your sins cost him his only begotten son. And it is only in the recognition of the atoning sacrifice of his son that one's sins will be forgiven. Otherwise, not. When people are delving in deviant behavior, they say, oh, God is love. The love of God 
is expensive. First John chapter 2 verse 2 says, He, Jesus, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. What that means is this. That over 2,000 years ago, everyone who is going to live on this planet Earth, his sins has been paid for. But what does the scriptures practically mean? Romans 3, verse 23. Romans 3, 23. Then I'll add a 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Then the next verse says, And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. The verse 23 is saying that for all have sinned. And then 24 says, for all are justified. How can all sin? Then the next verse says, all are justified. There is a missing link. But the verse 25 and 26 supplies the gap. So let's go to verse 25. Please get your Bibles close to you. Why is it that all have sinned? And then the next verse says, all are justified. 25 says, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. To be received by faith. He did this. To demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance. He had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Now this is 25. Forbearance is. Abstaining from the enforcement of a right of punishing sinner or the sinner to eternal condemnation, God presented Christ. Now, the Bible says that in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. And I'm saying that his forbearance here means that Abstaining from the enforcement of a right of punishing the sinner to eternal condemnation, God presented Christ. Verse 26. God presented Christ. That is, God brought before or introduced to the public or to the world Christ. Why? Verse 26. Romans 3, 26. He did it to demonstrate his, God's own righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Now, he did this to demonstrate. To demonstrate is to make evident or established by argument or reasoning or to prove his own righteousness or uphold his justice. Why was this demonstration necessary? See, there are many attributes of God and they all together forms the nature of God. Whilst God's love wants to bring the sinner in, his holiness stands against the sinner. So we cannot always say God is love. What about his holiness? So his love is inviting the sinner 
But his holiness is stopping the sin. His faithfulness is saying that the soul that sins shall die. And his mercy is pleading for pardon. In his wisdom, God decided to present Christ. To present Christ. So to uphold this righteousness, God decided to present Christ to all to be accepted by faith. That was the deal. So the holiness and faithfulness stands at one side. Say, no. Your holiness, we can't accept this sinner. Then love, mercy, says, let them come. Then his wisdom says that, let's present Christ. Let's present him. To be accepted by faith. So now let's go to chapter 3, verse 21. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known. To which the law and the prophets testify. What did they say? This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference whether Jew nor Gentile. That is the deal. So God presents Christ. So that whosoever accepts Jesus Christ, the blood will cleanse the fellow from his or her sins. That pacifies holiness and faithfulness. And that man can come to God. If the person does not accept this deal, then God has satisfied his justice. So this is how God packaged salvation. And he backed it by oath. The oath is supposed to settle all disputes and arguments. Now sometimes, when you see a people of a certain religion, look at their numbers, and you wonder whether this gospel will be preached. That those who do not accept Christ will go to hell is true. If we look at their numbers, but listen, this deal was backed by oath. Nothing can change it. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16, please. People swear by someone greater than them, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. So when you want to testify in court, you swear by to a deity or someone or something that is greater than you. God also gave a testimony. What that means is that he swore. But let's look at verse 13. When God made his his promise to Abraham. Since there was no one greater than him to swear by, he swore by himself. So God swears, but there is no one greater than him. He swears by himself. Verse 17 says that, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear, to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with oath. God did this so that by two unchanging, changeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged that we have not believed in vain. So God swore by himself and he Took an oath. You see, in the context of law, a testimony is 
the statement or declaration of a witness under oath or affirmation. Now, I want to invite you to God's testimony concerning his son. Relative to the salvation of humanity. 1 John 5, verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. We accept human testimony. 1 John 5, verse 9, 5. We accept human testimony. But God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, comma, which he has given about his son, full stop. Now, so listen, God has given a testimony about his son. Whoever believes in the son of God accepts this testimony. Or whoever accepts this testimony believes in the son of God. The reverse is also true. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. And if you make God out to be a liar, you can't be his son. Because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. Then the big one, verse 11. I hope we are in verse 11. And this is the testimony do you see the column? Yeah. It means he's going to give the testimony. God has given us, mankind, eternal life. Comma. And this life is in his son. Full stop. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Remember, the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life, period. And this has been declared on oath. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are marrying somebody who has, does not have the son of God, your husband is not the child of God. According to scripture. And this is a testimony declared on oath. Nothing, no generation can change it. And this book is law. This book is law. This story, this good news of God's forbearance, this new arrangement must be told. People must be made aware. The sinner ought to be confronted with, with it. The gospel must be preached. What is gospel? Ordinarily, when something or a statement is referred to as gospel, we mean Something regarded as true and implicitly believed. Gospel is also a doctrine regarded as of prime importance and ought not to be altered. So when we are saying gospel, you can't alter it. It ought to be believed. You don't argue gospel. Especially when the gospel is coming from the king of kings and the lord of laws. It is a decree. What is the gospel as far as scripture and Christianity is concerned? 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. I read up to verse 4. Now brothers and sisters. I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, 
which you received and on which you have taken your stand by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word i preach to you otherwise you have believed in vain now pay attention to verse 3 for what i received i pass on to you as of first importance that is gospel gospel is of first importance and you see the column there where is it is there so he's going to tell us the gospel what is the gospel that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures or according to the law that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures this is the gospel this is the gospel anyone who believes in this is saved otherwise not this is the good news now four things we ought to do with the gospel number one it must be preserved not in any particular order i should say number two it must be preached number three it must be taught number four it must be demonstrated let me take the first one the gospel must be preserved galatians 1 from verse 6 i am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to to live in the grace of christ and are turning to a different gospel which is really no gospel at all evidently some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of christ now the verse 8 is big but even if we paul inclusive or an angel michael and gabriel inclusive from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you let them human beings angels be under god's curse why is he making such strong statement the answer is simple because god himself has given his testimony about his son on the oath therefore for paul no man no demon no angel should attempt to alter it or say something contrary if anyone on any angel attempts let them be cursed why they are trying to alter what god has said on the oath let them be cursed see god did not just make this statement concerning his son no the son earned the right to be the savior of the world he gained it as due return now he entered into this world as the second adam there was all possibility that we could have had a third adam but because he passed God assigning him to be the savior of the world. Philippians 2 from verse 5. He's a good man. <laughs> Thank you now let's go to the scriptures that we know my prayer is that your faith will be fixed so that nothing will be able to move you 
We must go in out there to possess the nation knowing what we have and what we stand on. Philippians 2, 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in a human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Now, verse 9 says, Therefore, as a result, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So you see that he end it. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every time you confess that Jesus is Lord, when you do that, it glorifies the Father. See? The Father Jesus is the Savior. Scripture has attested to that. How do I know that? God has given proof to this by raising Jesus from the dead. Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Now, this is just big. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man, the man he has appointed. He has given proof to this to everyone by raising him from the dead. God has given proof to Jesus the Savior that he is the man that is appointed by raising him from the dead. I want to challenge anyone that is listening to me. Tell me any religious guru who died and rose again. Tell me. Mention his name. And we will throw this book away. Mention his name. I'm waiting. Mention his name. Mention his name. This is the gospel. It must be preserved. Galatians 2 verse 4. Galatians 2 4. This matter arose between some false believers. This matter arose because some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. Now, verse 5 says that we did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. We need to preserve it for the succeeding generations. The truth of the gospel must be jealously guarded and preserved and hand over to the next generation. Now, from the New Living Translation, I want us to read together if you can. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8. From the New Living Translation, if you have. Are we there? Shall we read together? Always. No. Shall we go? Ready? Go. You are not reading. It's not there. Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh. If I were God, I would have had some eyes behind my, my back. Um, white on this background will people see? Are you okay? Shall we read together? Oh, now, my interest is in the word always, not the rest. Always, 
Remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. Always, in every generation, remember that Jesus Christ, the descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. Always. Don't alter it. Don't adulterate it. These days, our current generation, when you're talking about prayer, they said, but they want something else. Do you want anointing oil? Or you want water from Jordan? Number two, it must be preached. The gospel ought to be preached. Because it is the power of God that saves the sinner from the claws of Satan. Nothing disarms the enemy so easily as the gospel of the kingdom of God. Nothing. See, all of us who are here, once upon a time, we were under the claws of the enemy. But why are we free? The power of the gospel. You always have power when people are not preaching the gospel. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jews, then the Gentiles. And inside the gospel, according to verse 17, is wrapped the righteousness of God. Once you receive the gospel, you have the righteousness of God. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Righteousness that is by faith from the first to the last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You see, our most powerful songs are not our worship songs. No. Our worship songs could be nice, best, but our most powerful songs are not our worship songs. They are not our praise songs, but the gospels. <laughs> is there a heart that is way? Diana, where are you? Longing for pardon today. Hear the glad message proclaim. Jesus is passing this way. Oh, this way. Oh, this, this way. way. Hallelujah. Jesus. It's passing this way. This way. Oh, it's it's passing, passing this, this way, way right, right now. Jesus, Jesus is it's passing, passing this, this way. way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This way. Oh, oh, this way. This way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Is passing this way. Oh, he's passing this way. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. Unto you. His word, hallelujah, is only that you live and live. Look and live, look and live, my brother live, my brother live. Look to Jesus, look to Jesus. Oh! 
Ashanti man raises the song. Yet the old chief will be Abba. Hey. The whole heaven will stand up. When you say his name is Jesus, hell will shake. Now listen. There are certain groups of people who have ring fenced their religion with governmental laws. Because they are afraid you know what they are afraid of not the church but the gospel so you go into a certain nation you say here yeah, we don't convert what are they afraid of if they like let them remove the governmental laws and let us enter them with the gospel we shall extend their religion 
Let us pray against such nations that all this laws may be broken. Let all these walls be broken down. Let's break these walls today. Let's break them in the Arab world. Let's break them. It is for a purpose, it is for a reason you were giving to us as a gift. And tonight as a church, my Lord and my God, we come before you and say, every governmental rule, every barrier, every blockade, anything that stands Jesus. in the way, can also arise, oh God, Jesus. and let your enemies be scattered Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And as we let you, oh God, Jesus. draw men unto yourself, Jesus. oh God. Draw men unto yourself. Let the gospel do the work, my God. In the name of Jesus. Be glorified here in Germany. Be glorified in Holland. Be glorified in America. Be glorified in Ghana. Be glorified in Nigeria. Be glorified in Canada. Be glorified in Israel. Be glorified in Egypt. Be glorified in Afghanistan. Be glorified in every home. Mano Sakaha. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please have your seat. Please have your seat. This gospel of the kingdom ought to be preached, then the end will come. This gospel ought to be preached. To preach the gospel. Is to tell the redemption story to preach the gospel is to open the eyes of the sinner and turn them from darkness to light and pluck them from the hands of Satan and translate them into the kingdom of his dear son Jesus to preach the gospel is to lift him up lift Jesus up and scripture says just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. And Jesus said this, and I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto myself. Let us lift him up. Let us preach this gospel of the kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom is the seed that gives birth to the church. It is senior to the church. It is the base that the church sits on. No gospel, no church. No gospel, what you have is a club. No church. But where the gospel is, it will give birth to the church. It is powerful, like a ballistic missile. It, it does things wherever it is planted. See, wherever the gospel is planted, it does things amongst the people. Col Colossians 1, verse 5 and 6. Colossians 1, 5 and 6. The faith and love that springs from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard is the true message, the gospel. Hmm. That has come to you. Now, in the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world. The gospel itself, when you send it out, 
it can bear fruit and grow. There's so much power in this gospel. The death, the barrier, and the resurrection of Christ. Since the gospel is bearing fruit. Now, and I like this last bit. Just as it has been doing among you, since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace, just as it has been doing among you. And I want to say that the gospel does things amongst us. It does things amongst us. How do I know? For the word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Joints and marrows. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Now, what we call the word of God. Its basic ingredient is the gospel. It is the foundation of what we call the word of God. And the Bible says that it is powerful. It is only this gospel, this word, that is able to divide the soul from the spirit. No doctor can. When you open the human being out, you can divide the soul and the spirit. The gospel penetrates through the bones to the marrows in the name of Jesus. If you are sick today, receive your healing by the power of the resurrected Christ. This gospel penetrates the bones. And I like verse 13. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Sometimes you go to church and somebody is preaching good. And it seems as if the person is in your house. As if the person is a gossip because he's telling you what is in your house. You go out to preach the gospel and people are arrested. They come weeping because the gospel is doing things amongst them. James 1.21 says that, Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that, so preval that is so prevalent. Humbly accept the word planted in you which can save your soul. The gospel does this. Those who hear the gospel, believe it and call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says shall be saved. But how then can they call on the one they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? The gospel it's not like pollen grains, no. It doesn't travel on wings of wind. It must be carried by men from person to person, community to community, town to town, city to city, continent to continent. So let us go out with the gospel. It has to be carried. Let us carry the gospel. It works. It saves. And this gospel of the kingdom ought to be preached. Then the end will come. It must be preached. In fact, any church that wants to grow and spread must be evangelistic in nature and pursuit. Any church. See, sometimes in our age now, people are putting so much premium on discipleship. But who should go and bring the people for you to decide? Disciple. Every check, discipleship, and the numbers are growing small. Who should go out and bring the people for you to disciple? Evangelism is as important as discipleship. The gospel first, then we disciple the members. We disciple the members. Number three, the gospel must be taught. You see, we preach the gospel, but we must teach the gospel. Every message we preach in church, its center must be Christ and him crucified. And the center of the message 
should be Christ and him crucified. Look at how Paul taught the gospel. Acts chapter 17 from verse 1. Are we together? When Paul and his companions had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a Jewish synagogue. As, his, as was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue. Now, and on, the, on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I'm proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul in silence, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. The gospel ought to be taught. Like I'm teaching. Teach the gospel. Let it be basic in our churches. Let's teach the gospel. Let's teach the gospel. Paul taught the gospel. Let us keep to the culture that we have received from our forebears. That whenever, wherever, any message is preached, it must be followed with an altar call. In weddings, funeral services, weekdays and weekends meetings, every message must be followed with an altar call. Let us hold on to that culture. This one, it works in any society. Let us follow every message with an altar call, especially when it's, it's a public kind of service. I'll take the fourth one. The gospel must be demonstrated. And I want you to get ready. If you are sick, you are going to be healed. Any door that is closed by the enemy against your progress is going to be open. I'm talking about ancient gates. Days that have existed for a long time. They are going to be shaken by the ancient of days. If there is ancient gate, there is the ancient of days. He will shake it. The gospel ought to be demonstrated. As chapter 8. One man, supposed to be managing tables, called Philip, decided to move on to Samaria. From verse 6. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed. Now let me say this. It is not enough to preach and teach the gospel. It must be audio, visual in presentation. The gospel must be seen and heard. It must be demonstrated. Now verse 8 again, 6 again. When the crowd heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. Brothers and sisters, this is the church of Pentecost. The giftings of healings, they don't belong to the past. As long as the gospel is preached, let us demonstrate it. Let us demonstrate it. For with shriek, impure spirits came out of many. I went somewhere recently, and then there was a prayer meeting. Then we, we saw that there was some spirits troubling some people. And then these young men came up around. They picked these sisters and they were taking them to the back of the church house. So, where are you taking her? Bring her into the arena. Bring her to where the show is. Bring her. Then one of the young men was standing there. The lady fell uh, on the floor and then he was leaving. I said, My friend, you are leaving. Cast the thing out. Impure spirit, cast it out. When we were like you, when people fall on the ground, we will go there, 
And when we say out and you say you don't, you won't go, that is, that is the end of your life. When we hear that you are saying you will not go, we will cause you to go. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Your men arise. The gospel casts out demons. And demons are still residing in humans. Demons are in churches. Demons are on the streets. Demons are causing people to be drug addicts. Let us cast them out. Now listen. Mere counseling will not solve the world's problem. One powerful prayer. One powerful prayer. Let's use the keys. And let's support with others. Otherwise... God has given us the keys. Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Acts 4, 7. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Look at your question. Because they've heard that this man at the beautiful gate who couldn't walk, is now walking, jumping and leaping and praising God. And when the Sahindri heard it, they arranged Peter and Paul before them. Peter and John before them. And they asked this question. By what power or what name did you do this? Now let's listen to Peter's response. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people. If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this. <laughs> oh, may the Peters arise. Know this. Then know this. You and all the people of Israel. You see the column? It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, that this man standing before you here is healed. Know this. Let us demonstrate the gospel. In the name of Jesus. Are you sick? Are you being tormented? What is going on? It is by the name of Jesus. The one who was crucified. The one God raised from the dead. The gospel. It is by his name that this man stands here healed. Now listen. Peter and John. When they saw this man who was asking for arms, then they said, we, we don't have money. But what we have, we will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> Rise. We all have this name. And we all have this gospel. What will happen in Europe when we are unleashed and we go out there with the gospel? Something will happen now. I want you to rise. I want you to rise. Lift up your faith. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Just open your mouth and begin to pray. Open up your spirits. You are never going to be the same again. Wherever you are, He will touch you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and begin to cry unto the Lord. Now let us pray that God touch you. 
Pray, pray, pray. pray.